few months ago, we showed you a great way of painting Acadian in the colours of the Roughnecks 2-0. So that's the classic colour scheme from the movie of 1997, Starship Troopers. Let's see how he's getting on. Ha <laughs> he's doing fantastic. But what about his enemy? Well, in this video, we're going to be showing you how you can paint your Tyranids in the colours of the Arachnids from the same film, which we have called High Fleet Clendathu. Now, once somebody asked me what the difference is between a civilian and a citizen, and I can tell you now, a citizen is willing to make painting their entire army their personal responsibility, and we're going to be showing you a great way of doing that. And that starts out with undercoating your miniature. Now, you could, of course, undercoat your models by hand, but if you do, you can end up stopping part way, and your army is still going to be 86% combat ineffective because it's just not undercoated. So here's a tip. Use a can of Chaos Black Spray, getting primed for good. So we've got our miniature undercoat with Chaos Black Spray, but before we start painting, what we need to do is just give some citizens advice to you, because this colour scheme is a bit of a tricky one, because the bugs that appear in the Starship Troopers movie do not really correlate very well to Tyranids, because they're completely different shapes and completely different styles of colour schemes. It's not like with Xenomorphs from Aliens that match quite well, so what we need to do is just think about how to interpret a colour scheme like this. The first thing is to understand that the bugs are completely different shapes, so what we need to do is just look for the key areas of how the colours are applied to them, and then pull that over the Tyranids as best we can, and this way you'll get that essence and feel of it. The second thing is to bear in mind that in the movie, all the different breeds of bug are completely different colours, and it's really quite varied. So what you should do is bring this into your army over the different breeds of Tyranids. So for example, for your expendable things like Termagants, maybe things like Warriors as well, you might want to paint them more like the classic Warrior bug, which actually is what we're going to be painting in this video. So that's that black, yellow, and red colour scheme. But when it comes to the bigger, heavier things like your Khan effects, you might want to paint that like a tanker bug and do it more blues and blacks and things. Whereas if if you're doing anything that's fast or leaps, like say for example Hormigants, you might want to paint that like the Hopper Bugs instead with some greens and reds. So the choice really is yours, but if you do these things you'll definitely get the feel of the Starship Troopers Arachnids. But what we need to do is start painting our miniature, and so we need to look at how to interpret that colour scheme onto our Termagant. And what we're going to do is start out with black, which is the dominant part of this colour scheme, and it's sort of lit up by flashes of yellow. But if we do the black first of all, what we can do is dry brush it before we put those markings on so it's nice and quick, so perfect for a swarm of these guys. So what we need to do is base coat the miniature first of all with an off black, which we can shade down with a wash to get some definition. The colour I've picked out for this is some Death Reaper, and the brush I'm using for it is my old medium base brush here from Citadel. So we've seen a lot of use this, but it's ideal for a job like this where we just want to quickly paint the miniature entirely with this colour. So what we need to do is just get that paint thinned down as ever with just a little bit of water, just being careful not to overdo it with a brush this large. And with that done, we can then start applying it to our miniature. And for this first colour, all we want to do is paint it all over with one quick coat. So just quickly apply it, making sure to work it into all the nooks and crannies as you go along. Once you've finished that base coat of an off black, we can then move on to the dry brushing before we put any of those markings on there. And for this, the first one we're going to use is actually going to be a really dark brown, but also a warm one. So the colour I've got here is some cuirass leather, and the idea here is to introduce a bit of warmth into the colour scheme like you get in the film. Just so need to be careful not to overdo it because we don't want to turn the miniature brown, it just has to be quite a subtle thing. So what I've got for this is a medium dry brush from Citadel, and you can see I've got some of my paint just here on the palette. All we need to do is just pick up a small amount of this, and remember, because we don't want to overdo it, we've got to make this a very light light dry brush. So work it into the bristles like that and start moving your brush along, just removing the excess paint and keep on going until we're going to getting a very, very small amount of this paint appearing on the texture of the paper. So really going down to about this point here, you see, so there's not very much left. With that reached, what we can then do is start applying it to the miniature. And what we need to do is just lightly flick it back and forth across the whole model. So just very, very gently like this, just for a hint of this colour. And here we have that model with that brown applied, and you can see I have kept it subtle so it's not overwhelming, but it does shift that tone of colour ever so slightly. And with that done, what we can now do is start moving with some lighter dry brushes to start to bring out all the features and details. And for this, what we're going to use first of all is some Storm Vermin Fur, which is going to be a very light dry brush, a nice greyish kind of brown colour. And after that, we're going to go much lighter into more of a khaki colour. So in this case, we can use some Temple Stone. But first of all, what we need is that Storm Vermin Fur, and to apply this one, I'm going for a slightly smaller dry brush now. This is a small dry brush from Citadel. You can, of course, keep to that medium one if you want to and want to cover larger areas, but I prefer the smaller one at this stage just for a bit more control as it's applied. So what we need to do is set it up in the exact same way that we did before, just really work that paint into the bristles and removing the excess until there's hardly any there. 
and then we can start applying it to the miniature. And what we're looking for here is a light flicking motion. So very gently across the miniature like this, looking to catch sharper edges and corners. So just gradually building it up, just changing our angle as we need to on that carapace on the back to make sure we're catching those sharp angles on those serrated plates there. As we get around to the soft parts of the body, such as around here, we just want to very gently just flick downwards and over them like that, just to catch a bit of that texture. And once that's done, we can then repeat the process using some temple stone, only a little bit lighter this time, so just gently flicking it on. Because with this color, we need to be careful not to overdo it because it's such a light color. Instead, we just want to get the sharpest bits of texture across the miniature. And there we are, the dry brushing stages are now done. So now it's time for the fun part, which is to paint in the markings. And here what we need to do is go through that interpretation of taking it from the film creatures and putting it onto Tyranids. So if we look at the warrior bugs, what we have is actually yellow and red patterns that appear on them. And the red's sort of hidden away because it tends to be on top of them. And in the movie, you tend to be looking up at these creatures. So it's not immediately obvious, but it is there. So we're gonna start out with that. For this, what we need is a darker red. So I'm gonna use some corn red for this. And to apply it, I've gone for my size one brush here from Art Sopus. If you wanna go for a Citadel brush, I'd recommend a medium layer, something like that. And what we want to do is just thin this down so it's a little bit translucent on your palette. So just adding water in as you need to, being careful not to swamp it with too much, bringing it down to about this point here where we'll need to apply it as two or three thin coats just to build up that color. This means we'll get a nice organic feel to it. Speaking of which, bear in mind that these creatures are not going to be exactly the same all the way through. So as long as you follow the general rules, they'll all match, but don't fret about every single one of them looking exactly the same in how this pattern appears. But what we need to do is start looking for how the pattern is in the movie, and it tends to go down their backs across the middle of it, loosely following the shape of the carapace that they have. So putting that onto our termagant just here, that means we're looking at areas around here where we want to apply it in the direction of that bone sort of pattern that they have on these carapaces, but focusing towards the middle and loosely following the shape of it as it pinches in. So you see on the shoulders it goes a bit wider that means as we get further back we need to start getting narrower so just bringing it closer towards the middle there like that and then following it quite closely down the middle all the way down the tail as well now you'll notice i'm avoiding these little bumps that appear on the back and that's because i want them to stay black so the black stays dominant on the creature but i'm going to go around them so just bringing it around those parts just there pulling it around, poking it underneath there. Now this also will need to go across the head and on the gun as well, as we've got a little flesh borer here, we can do the pattern here too. So just applying it into this region here, again, following that shape and direction of the bone. Now one other area to get at this stage is going to be around the head because the creatures actually have this reddish pattern around the eye. So what we want to do is paint that in at this stage as a base coat. So we're looking at putting it around this region just here, again, just thinly dotting it on just to build up that color there like that. And we can also use it to pick out the tongue as well. And here we have the model with that red pattern applied and you can see on the back there just how it expands and contracts following the general shape of the carapace plates and also I put it on the front of the legs just down there. Now one other area I did add it on is on the back of the claws which are a bit tricky to see because they're so small there's one just there, we've got this one just here. They need to be red on the back of them as well. And with that done, we can now move on to the yellow patterns. Now for this what we need is yellow that's going to cover well to get things going because we are painting over black. So in this case I'm using some dark sun yellow and I'm going for my same brush to apply it, still the size one. Now feel free to go for a smaller one if you want to. Now when it comes to the yellow patterns, these appear on the underside of the arachnid bugs and they kind of go up the sides of them in almost blob-like shapes. So we want to emulate that here. It means that what we should do is pick a starting point. So for example, if we go for the tail around about here, we just want to apply a blob of around about this sort of size like this, just working our way up the side of our creature and going down there like that. Then what we do is skip roughly the same distance and apply another one and basically just work away along like this. Now the first coat should be a little bit rough just to work out where things are going to go, but once it's dry, just go over with a second coat to make sure the yellow is nice and strong. But you see, it's basically just a matter of doing this to work out how your pattern's going to go. Now this pattern should go all the way to the end of the tail and all along the underside of the body. And as we've got these almost rib-like shapes, we can use those for it, but just narrowing the pattern together in this area, just picking those areas out there like that so we get those yellow flashes working along the underside. Also, if you have any claws, these need to be yellow on the actual cutting edge as well. So in the case of this one, we're looking at applying it around here and just bringing it down to the tip like that, leaving that black on the side before it goes down to the red on top. I 
I finished applying those markings now and I'm quite happy with how they're laid out. And you can see it's a bit of an organic process and just making sure you adjust it until you're happy. But once you are happy, you'll see it's starting to look the part. And so now at this stage, I would say it's looking good, but as we all know, the only good bug is a dead bug or indeed one that's had some wash applied to it, which is what we need to do now to get some shading and definition on there. And we need two colors at the same time here so that they can mix as we apply them to get that nice organic feel to it. And what we'll need is a black wash and also a sort of chestnut color wash. So in this case, I'm gonna use some Oblivion black wash and also some flesh wash. Now the black is going to be for the back of the miniature where the red markings are, but that flesh wash is going to be for the underside where the yellow is to give it a slightly orangey tint, which if you look at the movie props, you'll see does appear in that yellow in the corners of it. So we want to get that in now. To apply it, what I've got is a medium shade brush here from Citadel. And you can see I've got both colors set up next to each other on the palette. I'll start out with the black. What we want to do is just load up a generous amount of this and then start applying it onto the areas where all those, those red markings were and onto the surrounding black around it. So for example, on the back of the miniature here, we want to applying fairly broad strokes like this, covering quite a lot of ground quite quickly all along the back of the miniature and down that bit of armor there on the leg. Now what we need to do is once we've applied around about this much, it's time to quickly wash your brush and just make sure it's nice and clean, then grab some of the other color. So it's onto flesh wash now, and this we're going to apply on the underside, bringing it up to that black so that two colors mix where they meet. So we get that nice smooth finish between the two. But with this, it's a matter of just applying it onto the underside. So all the parts where the yellow markings are, such as around here. The wash is dry, giving us that shading, and you can see on the yellow as well, it's given us that slight orangey tint, so absolutely perfect for what we want to have here. And so now what we can do is move on to the next phase, which is going to be to layer the colors to brighten them up a little bit. And we'll start by going back to the red. For this, what we need is corn red once again, but to apply it this time, I'm going for a smaller brush. I'm down to a size double zero here. If you want to go for a Citadel, then I definitely recommend a small layer brush for this one, because what we're gonna do is apply this almost in little slash patterns to go over the top of the red that we've done already to start to emphasize that texture on those bony parts of the carapace and brighten it up at the same time. So what we need to do is just make sure there's not tons on the brush. So make sure it's nice and smooth as well. So there we go, that's pretty good. And then with it, we want to go back to where we originally base coated that red. So for example, along the back of the carapace just here, and go over it with just a few flicks of lines like this, going in the direction of the growth of the bone. And what this is gonna do is allow some of that dark red beneath to show through, but it's gonna build up that texture and that organic feel of this area. So it's just a matter of going across all the red like this. Now that we've got that red back, what we can do is just shift the tone of the red slightly that appears around the eye and on the tongue, because this sort of red is gonna be a little bit more fleshy. And if you look at the warrior bugs, you can see this around their eyes. It's like a sort of slightly orange salmony sort of color with the black eye right in the middle. So for this, what we need now is some Wazdaka red and to apply it again, stick to your small brush. I'm still using the double zero here. And with this color, we're just going to pick out little bits of these areas just to change it from that red that's appearing elsewhere. So you don't need very much of it. When you get around to the eye, what we're looking for is the raised up ridges that go around it. So in this area here, it's gonna be a matter of just getting this little bit behind the eye and then following underneath almost to that cheekbone like part that we got sticking out there, just a little bit past it, a little bit down on the jaw too. Meanwhile, for the tongue, we can use this to, to highlight it a little bit. So we just want to get a little bit going around the edge towards the tip, then a small amount as it goes into the mouth just here. With that done, we can now move away from the red for the time being, because what we need to do is get that yellow nice and bright as well. So here we're gonna to return to dark sun yellow, first of all, just to reestablish that color too. Then we can shift it a bit lighter, and here we're gonna use some skulker yellow. But first of all, we need some dark sun yellow, and for this, I'm going for the small brush again, so the size double zero. And here we're going to be, again, largely retracing our steps like we did with that red on the carapace, but we just want to make sure that we don't cover the entire blob as we go back over this now, because we want some of that orangey yellow to show through a little bit. So if we take a look at the tail, first of all, you can see we've got the pattern going all the way back here. What we want to do is just carefully move in towards the middle of it. So we're looking at this one, for example, just going in this sort of region here, and you can see I'm leaving that darker color just on the very edge of the pattern. Now, sometimes you'll get recesses, and when that happens, you want to avoid those two. So for example, on the tail just here, you can see I'm just doing it on that top there, skipping the recess, and then a little bit there, but it's all quite small, delicate areas all the way across it. So just quickly following all those yellow patterns, just brightening them up a little bit with this color. Next up, we can move on to a brighter yellow. So here I'm gonna use some skulker yellow. And with this, we're looking to just focus a little bit more towards the middle of each of these patterns, but still the same sort of technique. So just lightly applying it so we get that brighter yellow in the middle of each of these blotches. Mm -hmm. 
Now that yellow's nice and bright, we're ready to move on to highlighting the miniature. And for this, we're once again gonna start out with that red. And here what we need is some Evil Sun Scarlet. And this is just gonna be for the red that goes along the carapace along the back. Don't worry about it around the face or on the tongue because we'll do that a little bit later on. But with this red, what we need is a small amount. Got ready with that small brush once again. I'm still using my size double zero here. And what we want to do first of all on the carapace is start looking for any sharp edges where the plates overlap each other. So for example, if we take a look at the ones on the back just here, what we want to do is carefully move in with the tip of the brush and just trace along that line on the very edge. So we're looking at this sort of region just here. We just wanna follow it around up until where the red fades into the black. So bring it to about that distance there. And the same is gonna be true on each of these plates. Now, once that's done, what we can then do is just orientate ourselves so we're nice and comfortable, make sure there's not loads of paint in the brush, and then just do one or two flicks this color on that textured part that we've been building up. So for example, just there and just there, just to help that color stand out a little bit on that textured part as well. Once you're happy with that red highlight there on the red parts of the carapace, we can then move on to highlighting the yellow. And for this, we want a bright, punchy yellow. So here I'm gonna use some yellow flame. And we don't need very much of this, so stick to your small brush to apply it. You just need to get a small amount ready, thin down as ever with that little bit of water, just being careful not to overload the brush. And then we're looking for any features that stand out on the yellow parts. Now, the first one to get is for any claws, so any scything talons, anything like that. Look for the cutting edge and just apply a little bit of this color on the very sharpest part. So look at that region just there. When it comes to those yellow splodges, in this case, we're looking for any bits of texture that may be caught on them. So for example, on these ones along here, we've got these little bumpy ridges along the bottom. So we just want to get little areas like that. So just going along there, then a quick highlight on this curved part just round here. And with that, the yellow is done too. So now what we can do is move on to highlighting some other features in the miniature. And we'll start out with that more fleshy red. And here we wanna go more towards a salmon sort of color. So here we're gonna use some squig orange. Once that's done, we can then pick out the eyes of the pitch black. So here I'm gonna use some doom death black. And then finally, what we'll do is a fine edge highlight on the carapace and all that black just to finish it off. Here we're going to use temple stone once again. But first of all, what we need is that squig orange and we only want a very small amount of this. So it's time to use a small brush once again. So still that size double zero. With this, we just need to pick out a little bit of the features that stand out around the eye. So sharp edges, details, that sort of thing. So what we're looking at is going to be almost the bone structure that appears around here, really. So you can see down the side of the eye, we've got this line. Just want to pick that out just there, going to that cheekbone almost. A little bit on the underside of the eye as well. So we want to go just down there. And at the same time, we can use this for a fine highlight on the tongue. We just want to highlight towards the tip of it, so just around there. Next up, we're ready to paint the eyes black. And for this, we need a pitch black. So here I'm using some Doom Death Black. We just need to very carefully go in and just pick out the entire eye with this color. And once it's done, if you want to, you can add a glassy shine to it with a little bit of a gloss varnish. And then finally, we can return to some temple stone and this is going to be a fine highlight that appears on all the black parts. So this is gonna be the carapace to begin with where we can apply it as an edge highlight, looking for these parts that stand out. You can see I'm approaching with the side of the brush and just gently skimming it along just to ensure we get that nice sharp line on those parts. And also like with the red, if you want to, you can build that texture that appears on the back here by just doing one or two lines in that flicking motion towards the end of the plate. So for example, just a few lines going along here like this, very carefully applied so they don't overwhelm it. Now bear in mind the black also goes on to the fleshier parts. So here again, we're looking for a highlight and parts that stand out, such as this little ridge that we've got just here, to very carefully go around the outer edge to help these parts stand out too. Now finally, this is a great color for picking out the teeth, so be sure to get those as well. And with that, the core of the miniature is now painted, but there's one thing missing, and that is to paint the flesh boards around here, so it's a little gun, because here what we need to do is pick a different color so it stands out nicely from the rest of the miniature. And remember what we said earlier about in Starship Troopers how the arachnids have all different colors for the different breeds here. Well, what we could do is paint the gun as if it's a completely different sort of creature, because it is really, so a totally different color scheme. And we had to think, I think the one that will work really well here is to go for a pale fleshy color, just like the brain bug. So for this, what we need is a sort of grayish fleshish kind of color to start out with. We're gonna use some and claw for it. And to apply it, I'm gonna start out with my size one brush, but in this case, you definitely wanna have a smaller brush on hand depending on which gun you're painting to work around all the minor details and things as we go along. Because what we need to do whilst base coating this is just be careful of a few features. And that's gonna be any little horns and spikes that stick out from it. So you can see near the muzzle, there's one just beneath where I'm painting just now. So I wanna be careful along there. There's also these weird ridges that appear in it. So I'm gonna avoid those carefully as well. And the bone plates on it too. So just carefully working around areas such as just here.
Once you've got that base coat finished, the next thing to do is apply a wash over the top of this fleshy colour we've got on the gun. And for that sort of sickly tone, what we need to do is add some warmth here before we go back to neating things up and re-establishing the colour we have now. So in this case, what we need to do is return to flesh wash. And to apply this one, I'm going for my size zero brush. So a little bit smaller than the brush I use for the base coating here, but any smaller brush like this will do just fine. What we want to do is just make sure we keep this focused only on those fleshy parts and avoid all the carapace and things as we paint it. So use the palette as you need to, to make sure you haven't got loads of it on your your brush and then you're ready to start applying it. As I say, we just want to get it over this fleshy colour that we've got here on the guns. Just wash it over these areas and it's been neat whenever you encounter some other colours such as the hand just here and the carapace around here. The wash is now completely dry and so we can move on to the next stages which are going to be to clean that gun up and highlight it to bring it back to that skin tone of being that big fat smart bug. So what we need to do is layer it now using some Griffin Claw once again and then for the highlight we need to go closer to a near white. So here I'm going to use some Ivory Tusk. But first of all what we need to do is go back to Griffin Claw and this time to apply it I'm going to be using my size double zero brush because we need to be cautious this time in the application here. We're looking to avoid all the recesses where more of that wash settled but also we've got to be careful of all those other colours around there too. So once you've got that paint thinned and ready, we can start applying it to these parts. And so we're looking for the fleshy parts once again. On the flat areas, it's just a matter of applying it straight over them, just being careful not to drop into any recesses or any areas where more of that wash has settled. So you can see as we get close to this little spike that appears on the front of it just here, there's a little recess where it dips in, then it goes around that flesh right around that spike. So what we want to do is just make sure we avoid that recess between the two parts of the flesh there to retain that definition. And the same is going to be true on all the shapes as we work our way around this gun. And then finally, we can move on to highlighting it using a pale off white color. And in this case, I'm using some ivory tusk. So what we want to do is carefully follow any ridges or edges that stand out, just gently moving around them with the tip of the brush, just to pick out those features so they stand out. Now with this done, the miniature is then ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for. But in this case, I'm gonna be going for a wasteland base. And here we have our completed Warrior Bug Termagant ready to do battle with the Roughnecks 2-0 on Planet P. So as you've seen when painting this colour scheme on Tyranids, it is a little bit of a challenging theme because Tyranids just look completely different to the bugs from Starship Troopers. So just remember to interpret the colours as best you can and remember the different breeds will be in different colour schemes. So if in doubt, look at the film, take some reference from there and think about the different sorts of creatures and how you could apply those colours to them. And this way you're going to capture the essence and on the tabletop it'll look fantastic. Now when you are painting this army you are no doubt going to have to paint lots and lots of these creatures and if it's ever overwhelming and it's just too much just remember haul it all up everything you've got come on you apes do you want to paint forever <laughs> 